Hey everybody, Dr. Cobb here. I wanted to point out something that's shown up on our Facebook page just a couple days ago. This is a story that was posted by uh, Fitness Evolved over in Berkeley, California. It's a fantastic gym run by Advanced Z Health Trainers, Master Trainers. Uh, and they were talking about a client and it, it did a video. It says, how I improve my mile time by one minute in one week. Uh, and it's actually a really cool story. They basically have this client. She comes in and she's having some issues. She, feels, she says she feels like a robot. Uh, so they do some gait evaluation and other stuff, but they go through a standard Z Health approach, which is a really broad neuro-based or brain-based approach to try and figure out what was going on with her running. Uh, this, this person's not new to running. She's done a lot, of, uh, a lot of long distance running in her life. So she knew something was off, but she didn't know what to do about it. And I actually thought that this would be a really cool story to talk about to give you an example of a biomechanical versus a neurologic approach to fixing problems when clients come in the door. So if you think about this, this uh, young lady going to a kind of standard running person or standard trainer and says, hey, you know, my time's going down. I'm really tired. I don't feel good when I'm running. What are they going to do? In most cases, you're going to get exactly what you would go to a running store and see or whatever. You're going to get someone on a treadmill and watch them run and talk about new running shoes and look at their biomechanics. And all of those things matter. So you need to hear me say that clearly. All those things can matter, but they are not the end-all, be-all. When our trainers go through our initial four levels of certification, R, I, S, and T, they come away with a whole host of tools and evaluations that allow them to look more deeply into what's going on with someone's brain and how that is creating the, the movement issues that they may have. So to explain what happened with her, well, very clearly, here's, or quickly, here's the story. She came in, they did some tests, they figured out she was having some vision problems. She actually did vision exercises the vision work is what actually fixed her running problem and took one minute per mile uh, off her pace. So think about that, eye exercises fixing a running problem. Now, whenever we see that, we, we do this all day, every day, so to us it seems common, but let me take just a minute and explain neurologically what probably is going on. So if you've heard me talk about this before, one of the things I talk about are the three different things that the nervous system does. All right, so there's your brain. It's an awesome looking red brain. And then we have a spinal cord. And then I'm going to put some other stuff out here. I'm going to put, let's, let's do it in green. Uh, here's a, ooh, a really small foot. There you go. There's a foot. All right, so we got a foot here. And the way that we talk about this is the nervous system really does three things. Number one, it takes in input from the periphery. Okay? So input is going to come in to the brain from the various sensors through the rest of the body. So in green, we have our input. Now, once information hits the brain, there's a whole host of different things that are going on there, but the brain's task is to interpret the information that's coming in, make a decision about what to do with that information, and then finally, and I'll have to do this in red so it shows up for you, finally then, the brain has to enact an output. Okay, so in other words, it's going to make you move. It's going to make you do something in the world. So, basic brain science, neurology 101. We have inputs, we have interpretation decisions, and we have outputs. Now, why this is so important to understand is that any altered input, any altered input can cause problems in the brain or with the output parameters. All right? Now to keep this simple, in this uh, young lady's case, the altered input was visual input. She was having problems with the function of her eyes. Whenever the eyes were functioning better, almost magically, the brain functioned better and the output improved. Now this is again super simplistic, but at the same time it's very powerful to have a model that allows you to look at any performance issue and go, well, is it the eyes? Is it the inner ear? Is it a receptor problem? In other words, is it an input problem, a brain problem, or an output problem? Once you have assessments and tools to deal with all three of these things, it places you into another realm, really, in working with clients who have you know, basically been limited in their exposure with people to just a very biomechanical approach. If her problem was not in her foot, her ankle, or her knee, most traditional running uh, therapy approaches will not fix the problem. So in other words, you have to have a broader look at the human body to fix most of the things that people are coming in with. So hopefully this explains a little bit of what you saw in that video. 
from a neurologic perspective. If you have questions about it, please let us know. And ultimately, I just want to say awesome job, guys, Fitness Evolved, uh, for taking good care of your clients because that's really what this is all about. Thanks.